and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to talk about e-bike companies. And e-bike companies, they want to get our attention. So if you want to get our attention, here's how to get our attention. Okay, first of all, I think when you look at the price of e-bikes, I mean, they, there's a wide range, right? You can even get below $1,000, but most of them are most of them are, are over $1,000. So for, I'd say the majority of people that are buying a bike, the sweet spot seems to be between $1,500 and $2,000. That's what most people seem like they're willing to pay for an e-bike. I mean, some people go higher, I've gone higher. And some people, there's no way they can even go that high. That's fine. But uh, in general, I'd say the $1,500 to $2,000 is probably the price range that a lot of people are willing to go. So, in that price, the $1,500 to $2,000 range, for the most part, you're going to get a bike with a 750-watt motor, possibly a 1,000-watt motor, either one, most likely 48 volt. You might get lucky and get 52, but a lot of them are still 48, but we're getting better with that. We're getting more 52 and even 60 volt. But usually I would say 48 volt. And the battery is probably going to range anywhere from 14 amp hour to 20 amp hour. You know, right in that range for this price. So, but the thing that gets me is why are some bikes have the exact same, basically the same parts on it, like the same component. And yet one bike is $500 more than the other. One might be $1,500, whereas the other one's $2,000. Where basically they're the same bike. Yeah, the frame might be a little bit different design, but basically the same aluminum frame, uh, controller. That's another thing about the controllers are generally 22 to 25 amp in that price range. And so it really gets me that why are some $500 more than the other kind of thing? You know, I'm just using that as an example. Some will be $1,500 and some $2,000. Why is that? And when basically it's, it is the same bike, so other than the design might be slightly different. One might be uh, also a, like a step through versus a step over bike, you know. So that kind of bugs me. And I wish um, when you're getting your first bike, at least when I did, maybe, maybe you're different. But when I got my first bike, I was, you know, I just wanted to get a bike and I did my due diligence and, and I came up with the Rad Rover because it was popular. Um, it was a good name, brand name that had been out there a while. And so I kind of trusted that name just for that fact. And no problems with the bike, you know, great bike. But I learned after getting my first bike when I got my second and third, uh, I learned more and more. So I learned that I wanted more power to be able to hill climb, you know, and I wanted a different style of bike than, than the Rad Rover. I prefer the moped style like I'm on right now, the Lyric Graffiti. Not that there's anything wrong with the other bike, I just prefer this particular style. But I think if companies want to catch our attention, they need to make the prices uh, kind of affordable and not driving them up beyond what they really should be. I 
I find myself if I'm buying a new bike um, wanting to uh, wait for them to come on sale because then I think it's worth whatever price they're asking and uh, for example if there's a bike out there that's 2000 now let's say the Aventon Adventure let's use that it's about $2,000, right, for the Adventure 2. Well, oftentimes they'll have sales where they drop it down three to $500. Well, $1,500 sounds a lot better for that bike than $2,000. But the thing is, are you going to want to wait for sales, you know, especially when it's your first bike, you want to get a bike and you want to ride it. And to me, the best deals are often in the uh, Black Friday. And uh, I find those to be the best deals of all. And for most of us, if you buy a bike on Black Friday, which is the end of November, basically, you're not riding that bike till spring of the following year because the weather's, you know, gone downhill. We're moving into winter, you know, so you can't really ride it. So I... Uh, I wish prices were just a little bit better and more affordable for people because the first thing I get asked about any bike, how much are they? And then you tell them and they, they kind of give you that old wave like go on with you, you know, I that's too expensive. You know, I'll say fifteen hundred to two thousand, but I'll say you can get a you know a, a little bit lesser one for a thousand. I wouldn't want to go much below a thousand though. And they just kinda like give you the old wave off, you know, like uh, that's too much. So they are a little on the pricey side, I will say that, and if they can put them on sale and save you $500 and all that, then why can't they just be that price all the time? I think they can. So make them, make them a little bit more affordable for people. But if anybody asks me, you know, like, uh, what's what's uh, the price I'm going to have to pay if I want to get myself a, a good electric bike? And I'll always say the fifteen to two thousand dollars. That'll get you a decent bike. I would really shop around because I know more what I want to look. Or if you're a first-time rider or a first-time uh, buyer of a first bike, you may not look for the same stuff that somebody who's experienced riding one or two or more bikes before. You know, you, you get the feel for the bike. I mean, it'd be nice, nice if we could just try tons and tons of bikes. Then you could tell. I could tell pretty quick if I was comparing bike A to bike B, um, I think which one I like better because you could do a, a quick ride and tell, but I think you probably need the bike for a, maybe a good week to give it a good run, test it on hills and whatever, you know, whatever your situation is. Maybe you don't have hills where you are. I'll tell you, if you don't have hills where you are, you're really lucky because then you don't have to worry about trying to get a bike that's got you know, a boatload of power. You can get just a nice smooth, you know, like, you know, if you like the style of a Super 73 and you don't mind paying $4,000, I guess you could buy one of those, you know. But uh, if you got any hill climbing, then you got to start looking for power. And, and if you're going to ride long distances, uh, you're going to have to look for uh, a bike that has good range or, or a big, bigger battery. And so that's going to also cost you more money. Let me know in the comments below what what you think of that uh, and uh, what would get your attention from uh, bike companies. I know the first thing that I look at with a bike first is the look of the bike. Is it my type of bike? You know, does it look nice? And, and then I start looking at other 
features that the bike has. Now, of course, we all look at the price, right? And sometimes just a quick look at the price and we're turning the page, you know, kind of deal. Or you say, no way. And then you see, you know, sometimes maybe it's only 48 volt and they want over $2,000 and you're saying, no way I'm paying two, two grand plus for a 48 volt. But then again, maybe it's a 60 amp battery on it too, like some of the bikes. And that's going to do it for another video here on the channel. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much for doing that. And if you want to be notified as to when the next video comes up on the channel, just hit that notification bell and you'll be notified. And if you want to leave a comment on this or any other video, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Once again, thank you for joining me for this video. And until next time.